Hi, everybody. I, I just wanted to reemphasize the importance of, you know, being able to give back, which is part of what our talk is about tonight on service. So I wanted to start tonight off by doing my favorite of all readings I do every morning as part of the 11th step, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is giving that we receive and pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. You know, I come not want to read that prayer tonight because to me, St. Francis was a tremendous, tremendous example of the whole concept of service. He was truly a person of service. And I look at that and I look at the concept that we're going to talk about tonight, the gift of service. And service only comes after we do some work. And I want to kind of share this with you. You'll notice in the 11 steps of our program, how it's been set up. The first 11 steps are for us to work on ourselves. Having done our work or having had a spiritual awakening, having gone on the journey of being able to look within your spirit, we then carry a message to others. But we do that in very many different ways. And so service really is taking the gifts that we've been given and being able to share them in service to others. So service is a beautiful word. As we build this mosaic we're talking about, the exact same way the steps were, we kind of put these mosaic of gratitude together in the following way. It began with the gift of life. From life came family. Everything happens in a family system. Then from there, we talked about growth. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we're in a constant process of growing. Then we talked about openness, having a spirit and an attitude of openness and gratitude. And then we talked a lot about experiences. And all of our experiences in life, if we're able to face them and embrace them, can become our strength and become our hope that we share with others. And next, we talked a lot about the concept of change. And change is something we all have to work on every day of our life. But before that, we actually talked about getting into recovery, because recovery is a gift that pulls all this together. And then last week, when we talked about the concept of change, we realized the fact of the importance that everything in life is in process and in changing. Nothing stays the same, just like us. And so tonight, we kind of put the package together talking about service. And service is a very spiritual and powerful spiritual word because it means taking the gift that's inside of us, being able to allow that to come out and reach out and touch others. But I truly believe we do service in some of the simplest and most beautiful ways. We can do it in acknowledging another human being. We can do it by listening. We can do it by simply saying hello to someone. We can do it by giving somebody a hug, by letting somebody know that you love them. It's been able to take the gift and the energies that have been given to us in our spirit and be able to let them come out naturally and normally to others. That's why I believe we carry the message of service and everything that we do even in the simple little things that we do day in and day out. And we never know really how we're touching other people, but that's okay. Because I really believe deep down inside, when you speak from your heart, you speak from your spirit and not so much from your head, then really stuff begins to work. I always love telling the story. When I was a young priest, I used to write my sermons out memorize them, go over to church and practice them, then get in a pulpit on a Sunday morning, and in about three minutes, everybody was asleep. 
So now I've learned something. I've learned the importance of heart and spirit. If it comes from my heart and from my spirit, that is coming from the inside of me and not from a book and not from basically my head. I want to give you an example of this, kind of show you what I'm talking about, because we never know in the course of our journey if we're going to be able to touch someone else or connect with someone else. And one of the famous things I talk about is I want to go back to the year 1981. I, I'm kind of old, so 1981 was quite a while ago, I know. But the bottom line is, I was a priest at the time, and I dropped the lady off for treatment at a treatment center in Northeast Philly called Riverside House. After I dropped her off, it was about 10 minutes to one, I had lunch. The director said to me, Father, why don't you stay and give the talk at one o'clock? I said, it's 10 of one. He said, oh, come on. But see, back in those days, I was a real good card-carrying codependent. So I said yes to everything. I didn't even know what I was saying yes to. He said, I said, what do you want me to talk about? He said, talk about spirituality. I got up and I talked for 40 minutes, 45 minutes. When I was done, came up to me and he said, that was pretty damn good. Why don't you come back once a month and give the same talk? I said, I'd love to. I have no idea what I said. And so he actually taped it, gave me a copy of it. And on the way home, I listened to it. And boy, I got a lot out of that talk. It was fantastic. I love this concept because I realized more and more when you just kind of let it flow, let it come out of you, spontaneity, coming from your experience, from your strength, what's inside of you. It's amazing how powerful we all are, how beautiful we all are. But what gets in the way is fear, control, and trying to figure it out. Now, if you ever figure life out and get it all in place, call me. I want to take you on tour. You're not going to figure it out. Life is not supposed to be. It's a process we go through on a constant basis. It's a learning process, a growing process. It's our connection to one another. It's our connection to life. And so I'm learning over and over again that that spirit is what it's really all about. And God has a beautiful way of learning and teaching us. You know, I use another good example. I always love talking about it. One of my favorites. At that same uh, rehab when I was there one day, I gave my talk and a lady came up to me after the talk and she looked a little bit like a truck driver. You know, she was a toughie, real toughie. You know what I mean? She said, are you a priest? I said, yeah, uh, I hate priests and I hate you. I said, well, thank you very much. It's nice. She said, of course, I, I, I'm being nice tonight. The words she used, I really can't use in, in public right now, but I think you know what they are. She called me a few names. Well, the bottom line was, I just kind of, what could I do? And about five weeks later, at our outpatient program, guess who came through the door? It was her. And she still didn't like me. But over the period of time, she got to like me. And the bottom line is simply this. You know, you're patient. You touch someone. They're part of you. She eventually became a therapist at our place a beautiful lady named Teresa Barrett, who became a powerful and beautiful therapist. Unfortunately, she's not with us anymore, but this afternoon when I gave the lecture in the lecture hall, her, her picture was right there with a plaque up on the wall. It's beautiful to be able to look at these stories and see these people. And that was a real gift for me today, being in the lecture hall with a, you know, on, on Zoom, but also with a, with a live audience too. So it was a real experience. You know, it's funny sometimes when you look at how people kind of touch your life and then they kind of migrate into your life. They become part of you. You never know. And that's why it's so important to just plant seeds. Be open. Be a person that is willing to be able to be a person that just shares little things. Do it with your family first. Then with your neighbors. Then with people around you. But I'm convinced 
especially in the insane world we live in of negativity, to try to stay on a negative or the positive plane. Because I really believe the power of positive thinking can do a lot of healing, can help us to get through any situation, also to help us to be able to handle what I call the unknown, because you know we, we, we have no idea where what life is going to go one day at a time we're going to take. So we got to be open to that. But there's always those little tidbits, those little things that your spirit can really speak to. And that's why I really believe that God has given us this beautiful gift, the gift of our heart, the gift of our love, the gift of our energy. That energy is how you speak to people through energy, not so much through words. But you never know. I always use the example, we talk about service. You know, back in 2000, well, we go back a years before that. I used to have a custom when I was a chaplain at the Mays Landing County Jail, when I was a priest. And I used to get copies of the big book of AA. And I used to buy them by the case back then. And we used to have the paperback copies. And every time one of the guys at the county jail got ready to go to graduate school, uh, graduate school was a state prison. You know, they had finished their time at the county jail and were sentenced. I, and I, I knew they had an alcohol or drug problem. I would give them a copy of the big book as a going away present. And of course, you know, they weren't too thrilled about the present. They just kind of said, yeah, 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 thank you. You know, and a few other words too. But basically, they put it in a duffel bag and went off. Well, I paid no attention to it. I probably gave out, I don't know, hundreds of those books over the years. In 2014, I got a letter in the mail. And a letter came addressed to Father Vince de Pasquale. And I opened it. And this gentleman, who I never, I, I have no idea who he is. In the letter, he said, I've been trying to find you. Way back at the county jail, you gave me a gift. You gave me a book. I went to the state prison. I was bored in my cell one day. I picked it up and I read it. And all of a sudden, I got tears in my eyes. My story was in that book. I talked to the guard and got permission to start attending the AA meetings in the prison. I just wanted to tell you, thank you. And secondly, I still go back to the prison, but I don't stay anymore. I bring the meeting back to the prison. I'm doing service to give it back. So you never know when you pass something forward, how so many other ways it's passed on to others. And that's how it works. We're only on this earth for a short period of time. The importance is, whatever our gifts, whatever our talents are, and we're all gifted and talented, and we all look at things through different eyes, we all have different spirits. We have to be able to allow ourselves to just let those, that spirit and that energy flow out to touch others and be part of others. That's extremely important. Because in doing that, we really open up more doors. We open up more directions. It's called that pass it forward. So your gifts, if you pass them on, they continue the process of growing and growing. And that's one of the reasons why I've said a long time ago, I don't think we ever die. I really believe that the beautiful messages we give to others and we touch others, go to them, they then pass them on to others and they pass them on to others. And that's how we carry the message, the message of love, the message of peace, the message of generosity, the message of gratitude. That's how we carry it on and on and on to others in the course of our journey in life. And to me, that is so important. It opens up so many doors, so many directions, so many different things in life. And it really teaches us that we have a purpose on this earth. I truly believe we're carriers for the higher power. We're carriers to bring things to others. And it's amazing how one little thing here, one little thing there can carry a message someplace else. In the lecture hall today, I saw another photograph up on the wall of one of our counselors who have died. And I always love sharing his story. I met him at a rehab in Philadelphia, Charter Fairmont Hospital. And he was an interesting character. 
that used to drive me crazy. Now, sometimes I love the ones that drive me crazy. You know, that's why Loretta's great for me. She drives me crazy. But the bottom line is, you know, I really used to come up to me after all my lectures and drive me nuts. He wanted me to tell him whose higher power was. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Please tell me, please tell me. Oh, so one day I got tired. I said, come here. I, you know, in those days we could do this. I grabbed him by the back of the neck and I dragged him outside. Put him in front of a tree. And I said, now Bernie, I want you to talk to this tree every day and ask the tree to keep you sober. At night, come out and hug it and thank it for keeping you sober. Do that till I come back next week. Came back a week later and I said, did you talk to the tree? He said, yeah. Did you hug it? Yeah. Good. The tree's your higher power, leave me alone. Real simple and real plain. Well, the bottom line is, you know, just getting to meet him and be part of him on a journey. I never knew that years later, he would approach me get his degree in counseling, and then all of a sudden became a therapist at starting point. It was a great drug and alcohol therapist and worked with people, some of the people I had the hardest time working with. And again, he passed on. And so of course I had to tell the story at his funeral and you know, make sure everybody knew that story. I look up today and I see his photograph and his plaque on the wall and his dedication to our garden outside. It's just these memories, these things are so beautiful, but they all come from just a touch here and a touch there and meeting someone and not knowing where it's gonna go. I look around this room right here and different people I've met at different times in different places. And you're all part of my life and part of my journey. And that's important to me because it means that basically uh, when we meet each other, spend time with each other, learn from each other, we grow, we learn, we experience. There are a lot of these dreams that I think that some kid that pitched for me in baseball way back in, good God, I'm really going back now, going back when I was like 20 years old, you know, on a baseball team, a pretty good pitcher too. Never did I actually dream in wildest imagination that I perform his marriage and then have him each week come and visit us on Zoom. That's that strange one from Arizona out there. You know, I Billy. But I, I love the concept of this because it's funny how we had time together as children, younger, shouldn't say children, we were a little bit older, but basically how that just kind of goes to one direction, then goes to another, gets connected here and there. It's all part of the process we go through in life. And it's so beautiful and so special. And I can look around this room, you know, I see Pat, I see all the Carol. All these different people that are connected, you know, the, the Zoom bus, I just get a kick out of it every week. This is all part of our journey and part of our connection to one another and the things that we do to each other. We carry a message to one another and we grow together. We learn together. We experience things together. And this is part of what it's really all about. And so it's this constant little things of messages and the little things that happen. We never know where it's gonna come from or how it's gonna come from, but I know it's from God. I know the higher power, the higher presence is there guiding us and leading us. If we just have faith, we have trust, if we have an open mind, if we use all these tools of gratitude and actually live life with that attitude of gratitude. Everything will come to us. But remember, it'll come in God's time, not in our time. And that's where Another person who pestered me a lot when I was a kid, and I love him, my dad, he used to say to me all the time, Pashienzo Wyong, Pashienzo Wyong, patience, my son, patience, my son. He used to make me nuts by saying that to me when I was a kid. And guess what? He was right. He planted the seed, taught me, and now slowly but surely, I'm learning to be more patient even though Loretta will tell you at times I'm not, but I'm learning a little bit more at a time to be patient. I make my mistakes like everybody else, but really it's a gift. And that's why on my wall at starting point, I have an Italian pascienza on my big wall. So I can look at it every day, remember my dad, remember the messages. And it's funny how 
the little ways people teach you and touch you and later on in life, you connect with them. You know, I don't really believe that most of us in this room are what I call seed planters. Little tidbits we plant in people. You never know where it's going to go, how it's going to come forward, where it's going to happen. My other favorite story, and I got plenty of stories. My other favorite story is in 1985, and I was at Malvern Institute in Philadelphia. I used to go out there and give community lectures, you know, um, every two weeks. And I finished the lecture, and I decided, let me have a cup of coffee before I drive home. Because that's a long drive to Malvern. Anyway. I sat down in the cafeteria, was having a cup of coffee, and for some reason, this lady came and sat with me. Never met her before, no idea who she was. So I introduced myself, she introduced herself to me, and we started to talk. Don't ask me why. I really believe that things work through us, it's a process. I said, Andy, you know, someday I'm gonna, uh, I, need, I need to write a book. Everybody's bugging the hell out of me, making me nuts. I don't know how to write a book. I said, but you know what? Someday I'm going to get somebody to tape my lectures. We had tapes back then. To tape my lectures, transcribe them on a computer. And I use it as a background for a book. And he was sitting there with a very calm with a cup of coffee in her hand and said, don't worry about it. I did it already. I've been doing it for two years now. I love your lectures. I come to them. I tape them. I go home. I transcribe them so I can learn them better. So next week, she brought in the manuscript of my first book, Relationships to Gifts of Life. I don't have it put together into a book form, but the foundations, the basics were all there. You never know. A cup of coffee, sitting down with somebody, having a conversation. You never know where it's going to lead, what direction it's going to go into. You might meet somebody today, you know, at the starting point, this happens all the time, because we never know. And I really realize over and over again, if you put things out there, they come back to you. That's why I really truly believe that service is the act of sharing, the act of giving, but also the act of receiving. So we, we can have a tendency as <clears throat> excuse me. Where'd that come from? As codependents, we have a tendency to be over givers. We give too much. We never take time to allow stuff to come back. That's why this is flow I'm talking about tonight. The flow of putting things out and allowing things to come back. Because I really believe that service is a gift, a powerful gift. And we truly do service to others. It will come back a hundredfold. The rewards always come back. If you've been around 12-step programs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's those little things here and there. You never know where they're going to come from. You know, it's interesting. One day, giving a lecture, a starting point quite a while ago, you know, and we're having some financial trouble. I didn't say anything to anybody. But then I said a prayer. And next thing you know, I look in the basket. Is a check for $20,000. At the bottom of it says, tell nobody where it came from. It's my way of giving back. Different ways of service. It's, it's beautiful. Way back to the beginning of starting point, the same thing happened with a doctor who knocked on our front door and said, here, get your house fixed up, $10,000. Tell nobody where it came from. I want to give back for my recovery. Giving back is a beautiful thing. Only until you give back. It might be doing service for somebody in a very simple way. You know, a beautiful thing in that direction. You, you, you give and you receive. Because I really believe if we are truly people of service, that we'll receive things back a hundredfold and we'll have service given back to us. These are the rewards. These are the things that happen. The beautiful things of life. And it's funny how God sends these wonderful messengers into our life, these teachers, these moments, these special moments. And from them, growth takes place. New things begin to happen. All kinds of things keep growing. It's just totally amazing. This stuff excites me so much. It's unbelievable. Because every person I meet, no matter who it is, 
I mean, I had an example today, you know, I had to do a referral for somebody and I hadn't, couldn't find anybody to do it for. It. And so one of the interns came into me to meet me for the first time. I said hello to her and I asked her what her specialty was. And she told me what her specialty was. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, I got this referral. Oh, great, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, that's exactly the type of work I like to do. See what I mean? Prayer, put it out there, it comes back. That's where it's so important to have faith and trust and know that somehow, some way, we'll be led where we're supposed to be led. And that's why we have to learn. As you look at, you live in this world. I know it's a real world. It's a dysfunctional world. It's a crazy world. All we can do is walk the journey of this earth to the best of our ability, touching those we can touch, sharing with those we can share with. No, we're not going to save the whole entire world. I, I don't advise anybody trying that because I did. You know, you get agita, you get all kinds of crazy things and basically ended up in a hospital and all kinds of points. But please don't do that. That's insane. Concentrate on what's around you, your connections to people. You never know how you're going to touch another person, touch this individual, touch that individual. Who knows? You know, you don't have to know. That's what's so beautiful about it. And that's why a lot of times in the course of our journey, we experience things and we do things and we connect with people. And it might just be saying hello, having time to listen to somebody, getting to know somebody who lives next door to you. You know, I, I live in a wonderful neighborhood now. You know, thank God, it's a 55 and over community. And I think South Philadelphia moved here. It's totally amazing. But basically, you know, I, I joke about it today, but it's South Camden, South Philly, you know, Brooklyn, a few other places have all migrated here. And it's, it's kind of a place where everybody knows everybody. Listen, everybody else's business too, but that's the fun part of it too. But the bottom line is, it's kind of an open door. People are, but what I love about the place is somebody gets sick, somebody drives them, takes care of them, goes spends time with them. And basically we have welcome committees, welcome people to the neighborhood. We have all kinds of nice activities. So people are taken care of. We look out for our neighbors. And we have to start right there. It's where it starts. It starts with your neighbors. It starts with your recovery groups. It starts with people around you. It's all the simple little things. Because you never know. You make a phone call to somebody and they say, oh my God, thank, thank you for calling. You know, I know in recovery groups, it's important to stay connected to one another. And that little connection is so important. It's a big part of the journey. And so we talk about service. We talk about being of service to others and then basically learning how to say thank you when people will be of service to us. Gratitude works two ways and that's important all the time. Don't be afraid of thank you and also being able to share and give. I got to kind of put a little funny story out there. It's funny, but it's not funny. I love those stories that are funny, but not funny. You know, it's a mommy story. And I got about 400,000 mommy stories. I love my mommy. She gave me a lot of stories. That's why I love her. Anyway, when I was about 19 years old, uh, by the way, Pat, I was 19 at one time. So believe it or not, but I really was. But back when I was 19 years old, I was home from the seminary, you know, in the summertime. And my mother came up to me and she said, I'm going to go grocery shopping. She said, I'm going to stop across the street. She always did. She stopped at Salvatore's house called Sal Salvatore, you know, was in a wheelchair. So my mom would go over, check on him. She kind of took care of him. And she would make sure and get his grocery list from him. So when she did her grocery shopping, she also did his grocery shopping. So she went over, went grocery shopping, came home, carrying over her bags, put them down, putting everything away. And, you know, I didn't think much of it. I just happened to say to her, how's Salvatore doing? She said, he's dead. I said, what? She said, I went over to get the grocery list. He was dead. I said, oh, 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 oh. didn't you call the family? Well, not yet. I want to get my grocery shopping done. She said, 
But I'll call him when we're done. And she, and she said, what are you upset for? We just dead an hour from now as he was when I went over there. He said, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. I'll be some service. <laughs> you know, but you know, I looked at the old timers. I looked at their way of life and they didn't think twice about that. And she was right. But I know what the bottom line was, she wouldn't miss any excitement when she got the family and she should be over there for the rest of the day. I knew that. But it's okay. It's all part of it. It's part of community. It's part of being together with each other. Look out for each other. We're all family. We're all connected to one another. And that's why it's important also in doing service to do it with a peaceful face, to be able basically to look at things in life and have a spirit of humility, a spirit of, of humor, a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of acceptance, a spirit of adjustment. I can go on a lot of spirits here, but the concept is they're all, they're all part of who we are. Interconnect them with each other. That's the fun part of it, okay? We're family. It's a beautiful thing. So in tonight's prayer, I just want to share with you that concept of gratitude. Gratitude for where we are, gratitude for the people around us, gratitude for family, gratitude for all the beautiful things. And I really believe if you walk the journey of this earth with an attitude of gratitude, what's supposed to come to you will come to you. And believe me, we have the spirit inside of us to be able to handle all the things that come our way. But don't be afraid to share. Because when you share, you receive. Don't hide your, there's an old saying in scripture, don't hide your gifts under a bushel basket. Let them come out because your gifts are yours. They need to be shared so they can grow, get better and better as they share them. So let's pray. God, we come before you as a family in a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of love. We just want to thank you for all the wonderful teachers you have sent into our life over the course of our years. For all those who have gone before us and for the spirit energy they have passed on to us. Help us to continue that journey by passing it on to others. And to realize from there we get passed on again. And so a little bit at a time, we pass the energy of love, the spirit of love, the spirit of gratitude, the spirit of humility, all the beautiful things you are trying to teach us. Please walk with us, guide us, and know that you constantly lead us. So we look upon you, our higher power, our higher presence, the God of our understanding, to guide us on our journey, to take us to the journey we need to go. And we hope and pray that throughout our journey in life, be able to reach out and just touch another human being. Be able to carry a little bit of message of love that goes from you to us to them. So we thank you so much for the gifts you've given us. Teach us to share them so we'll be able also to receive them. We pray for this attitude. We pray for it as we remember those who have gone before us. They're all our family. We thank you, God, for them. We thank you for those who are here with us today. And we already thank you for those that we still haven't met yet. We ask that we ask for this blessing every day and we ask for it in your name, amen. And now we're gonna make an attempt if you unmute yourself